welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show, where this week we're taking a look at the latest supercar from Ferrari, the 296 GTB. We also have the 2021 Toyota Sequoia. Is this ageing 4x4 past it, or can it still compete against Ford and Chevy? And also we have the new electric Mercedes EQB and the beautiful new Lotus Emira. Plus A6, E-Class and 5 Series, which is the best executive saloon. Find out later on, now though, the news. The Volkswagen Group has announced its new business plan called New Auto. The strategy aims to balance the mix between electric and combustion cars over the course of the 2020s, with VW predicting that sales of combustion cars will drop by 20% over the decade. Volkswagen says that EVs will equate to half of all sales by 2030, and possibly 100% by 2040. The firm's new scalable systems platform is due for launch in 2026, replacing the MQB platform found in cars like the Golf, before eventually taking over from the electric MEB platform as well. The Mercedes GLB is one of our favourite small SUVs. Rivaling the likes of the Discovery Sport and Tiguan Allspace, it's a practical family car with seven seats and chunky styling. As charming as it is though, it isn't quite as spacious as the Land Rover nor as affordable as the Volkswagen. Now though, Mercedes has created a new version that takes it into a whole new market. This is it. The new Mercedes EQB, essentially an electric version of the GLB. It still looks fantastic, even better than the combustion-powered car with a new aerodynamic front end, gorgeous alloy wheels and a full-width LED rear light. Inside, the interior has been pretty much copy and pasted from the GLB, and that's no bad thing. It comes with the fabulous widescreen infotainment system and digital instrument display. Sure, there are other electric seven-seaters, but they're all either van-based, like the eye-catching Nissan e nv 200 or expensive models from Tesla. The EQB is an altogether more stylish and luxurious alternative to the vans and more affordable than the Teslas, with prices likely to start at around £50,000 when it goes on sale later this year. There will be numerous powertrain options from launch with up to 268 brake horsepower and either front or all-wheel drive, with Mercedes confirming that the EQB 350-4MATIC will get a WLTP range of 260 miles. But the Merc isn't the only posh new EV SUV to hit the market this year. This is the new Lexus UX300e, the Japanese brand's first ever electric vehicle. And that may seem hard to believe at first. After all, Lexus has become famous for its hybrids, having sold almost 2 million of them around the world. So, after having something of a head start into the electrification game, how has Lexus got on with its first full EV? Well, it may not be quite as stylish as the Merc, but it looks modern with lots of sharp creases and interesting angles. And it's a similar story inside, with a smart, well-equipped cabin that looks great, but somehow lacks the wow factor of the EQB. And it isn't just on the styling front where the UX loses out to the Mercedes. Its range is just under 200 miles, and its 7.5 second 0-62 time will hardly get your pulse racing. Like all Lexus though, the UX300e is exceptionally well built and its classy, conservative image will appeal to some more than the showy Mercedes. There are of course a number of other electric SUVs coming to market this year, including the BMW iX3 and the Audi Q4 e-tron. But neither of these had the third row of seats you get on the Mercedes. The EQB then is not only one of the coolest electric SUVs out there, but also 
one of the most practical. In these times of constant progress, the car industry is more advanced and fast moving than ever before. New models are released every week, with manufacturers constantly working hard to outperform each other. Very occasionally, though, a car slips through the net of relentless progress. This is the 2021 Toyota Sequoia. And it's a facelifted version of a facelifted version of a facelifted version of the car first revealed in 2007. It almost feels as if Toyota's North American division has forgotten about it. But who cares if it continues to sell as well as it does? Now though, the 4.7 litre motor has been dropped, so all models are now fitted with an even bigger 5.7. This has plenty of punch, and with 381 horsepower, over 30 more than the Chevrolet Tahoe and six more than the entry-level Ford Expedition. A new limited edition Nightshade model has been added to the lineup, joining the off-road ready TRD Pro model. This tooled up, trail-ready version features new Fox shocks, skid plates and blacked out emblems, giving it more street cred as well. However, it is $64,000, making it very much a car for enthusiasts. Having said that, the baseline SRV model is still very capable with Apple and Android support, adaptive cruise control and lane departure warning as standard. Optional extras include heated front seats and integrated navigation. Features and gizmos aside, the cabin of the Sequoia does show its age. Besides the 7-inch touchscreen infotainment display, complete with smartphone capability, the Sequoia's interior is outdated and a little dull. Where the Sequoia majorly falls down is with its fuel economy. The combined figure is quoted at 15 miles per gallon, which is poor even for the large SUV class. For a daily driver, this will put off a lot of buyers. For these reasons, we are still waiting for the upgrade that the Sequoia needs to leap to the top of the large SUV table. However, Toyota has recognized this, and in 2022, the brand has promised that the Sequoia will be overhauled to the F1 platform, which allows for hybrid variants and its latest infotainment systems. So if the Sequoia is the kid with a retro games console, which of the new gen, the Ford Expedition and Chevrolet Tahoe, is the best pick? Well, both have been recently redesigned and upgraded, so there is plenty to shout about. On the power front, the Tahoe packs a bigger punch, thanks to a pair of available V8s as opposed to the V6 in the Ford. The smaller one feels a little weak, but opt for the full fat 6.2 and you'll soon see the Ford disappear to nothing in the rear view mirror. It's also a bit cheaper and inside, the space and number of gadgets available is seriously impressive. The options list seems to go on like the receipt for a weekly shop, with wonderful things like Boss Audio and big screens for the rear seats. The Expedition has the Tahoe one-upped on towing though, something that's very important in the States. It can tow well over four tons, more than any of its rivals, and yet Ford still claims a respectable 24 combined MPG. Inside, the big Ford has leather everywhere, but it is let down by acres of nasty cheap feeling plastics. It looks good though, with a big square dashboard matching the exterior styling. But the Chevy is the winner on this occasion. It has tons of storage and really is the most practical car in its class. Join us again after the break for our executive saloon showdown, plus jaw-dropping new releases from Lotus and Ferrari.
Coming up, the Ferrari 296 GTB. But first... There's nothing quite like a Lotus. A quintessential British sports car maker steeped in history and racing pedigree. Famous for its founder Colin Chapman's philosophy of simplify and add lightness, cars like the Elise and the Exige have continued to occupy their own corner of the market as the less obvious alternatives to Porsche Boxsters and Alpine A110s. Now though, after a remarkable 25 years on sale, production of the Elise will end this year. So how do you replace this icon of the British car industry? Well, with this, the Emira, Lotus's last ever combustion powered car. A beautiful thing. We're sure you'll agree, the Amira is the Norfolk-based brand's first entirely new production car in over a decade. But it still carries some familiar features. The wonderful styling has been influenced by the Evia, an electric hypercar in its final stages of development, while the supercharged Toyota V6 from the Evora and Exige remains. However, the 3.5-litre V6 isn't the only engine option. While all first edition models will be equipped with the familiar Toyota engine pumping out something in the region of 400 horsepower when it arrives in dealerships in spring next year, later versions will also be available with a turbocharged 2-litre engine from AMG. So far, it's unclear what state of tune the engine will be in, and it seems likely that it won't put out as much power as it does in the Mercedes A45, with the sonorous Toyota V6 rumoured to be the flagship model. The AMG engine, though, will be lighter, and that's a good thing, as the Amira has strayed somewhat from the simplify and add lightness idea. In its lightest form, the Amira weighs a smidge over 1,400 kilos. That's about the same as a Porsche Cayman, and about 300 kilograms heavier than the Alpine A110. This heft, though, might not be such a bad thing. For years now, Lotus buyers have had to make do without the luxuries of Porsche. In the old days, you didn't buy a Lotus for cup holders and sat-nav, but now Lotus hopes a few mod cons will help them to compete against the Stuttgart giant. And we can't see why that wouldn't be possible. The Amira looks fantastic. It has a genuinely well-equipped cabin, and it has a choice of engine and gearbox options. This may be the last petrol-powered Lotus, but it's also the start of a new era. For decades now, the BMW 5 Series has been one of the most popular cars in the executive saloon market. Famed for its demure image and rear-wheel drive balance, the 5 Series is still a class favourite both as a saloon and as an estate, but now it's had a refresh. Updated for 2021, the 5 Series has had a bit of a midlife facelift. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the kidney grills have grown, while the headlights have become slimmer. Both the front and rear bumpers have been updated, and there are some new alloy wheel options to choose from if you go for the popular M Sport trim. But it's under the bonnet where the changes are most prominent. The majority of four and six cylinder versions now come with a 48 volt mild hybrid system, which gives you an extra 11 brake horsepower to help get you off the line more quickly and help with overtaking. The 530E plug-in hybrid model is now available in touring form, and there's a new six-cylinder FEV on the way called the 545E, which gets 387 brake horsepower and all-wheel drive. The top of the 5 Series tree is still the mighty 600 horsepower M5, but all versions now come with more standard kit across the board. Like the BMW, 
The E-Class has received some nip and tuck surgery recently with a fresh face and new equipment. The changes are pretty similar to those of the 5 Series, with new bumpers, a new grille and some reshaped headlights helping it to look as up-to-date as anything from the rest of the mind-boggling Mercedes range. The E-Class though has always been the brand's bread and butter. It's no niche-busting crossover or shooting brake and as such the designers haven't gone over the top. This new E-Class is as classy as it ever was, with a smart new steering wheel complementing the tech-filled cabin. There are six powertrains to choose from, ranging from a turbocharged 2.0-litre petrol mild hybrid up to a 3.0-litre V6 and several diesel options. As before, two AMG versions top the lineup with the 423 brake horsepower E53 AMG and the full fat E63S, which gets a fire breathing 4 litre V8, producing 604 bhp. However, we can't talk about the 5 Series and E Class without mentioning this the Audi A6. While its design has remained unchanged since its launch in 2018, it still looks just as smart and modern as its competitors from BMW and Mercedes, with its angular headlights and muscular stance. But it's inside the cabin where the A6 really shines. There are three main screens, two in the dash and one digital instrument cluster behind the steering wheel, each displaying crisp, bright graphics. They're intuitive and easy to use once you get used to them and make the whole car seem very cutting edge. Like the BMW and Mercedes, it gets a wide range of engine options as well as two performance versions, the diesel-powered S6 and the estate-only RS6. As a car to drive every day and soak up the miles though, we still love the BMW 5 Series. Even the lowliest models are well equipped and great to drive, while the performance versions are amongst the most dynamic saloon cars on the market. The competition is tighter than ever, but the BMW remains our go-to. Not including special editions and limited run cars, Ferrari currently has six different models in its lineup. There are plenty of more mainstream manufacturers with fewer, and Ferrari hasn't even released its SUV yet. So, is the historic Italian Marks lineup getting overcrowded? Well, let's be real, of course not. It's impossible to have too many Ferraris, surely. And this is the latest one. Called the 296 GTB, this is Ferrari's first V6 powered car since the Dino. Don't go thinking though that this is some sort of baby Ferrari to sit under the V8s and V12s, as the 2.9 litre V6 pumps out an almighty 654 brake horsepower. Okay, that's not as much as the F8 Tributo, but wait. The 296 has something hidden up its sleeve. The twin turbocharged hot V engine is helped along by a hybrid system, adding a few more horses for a combined output of 819 brake horsepower. All power is sent to the rear wheels via an 8 speed gearbox. The 296 then sits somewhere in between the F8 and the SF90. Ferrari's other hybrid monster with almost a thousand bhp. Like the SF90, the 296 is a plug-in hybrid, and it can drive on electric power alone for around 15 miles or so. But play around with the Manatino switch and get the 296 into its fastest settings, and it'll reach 62 miles per hour from rest in just 2.9 seconds. 124 miles per hour in 7.3 and hit a top speed of 205.
With F8 production due to season next year, this leaves some room for another Berlinetta model to sit underneath it, be that with a V6 or a V8. And there's more good news when you take a moment, step back and look at it. Inspired by the classic 250LM of the 1960s, it's one of the best looking Ferraris of the modern era. Prices will start at around £230,000, with customer deliveries starting in spring next year. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out Audi's new EV Super Saloon, the RS e-tron GT.